ice ages and Earth's wobble. For more than a century, scientists have known that Earth's ice ages are caused by the wobbling of the planet's orbit, which changes its orientation to the sun and affects the amount of sunlight reaching higher altitudes, particularly the North Pole, the polar regions. The Northern Hemisphere's last ice age ended about 20,000 years ago, and most evidence has indicated that the ice age in the Southern Hemisphere ended about 2,000 years later, suggesting that the South was responding to warming in the North. But new research published online August 14 in Nature shows that Antarctic warming began at least two and perhaps four millennia earlier than previously thought. Most previous evidence for Antarctic climate change has come from ice core drilled in East Antarctica, the highest and coldest part of the continent. However, a U.S. led research team studying a new ice core from West Antarctica found that warming there was well underway 20,000 years ago. Let's remember that we have discovered uh, 47 volcanoes under the Antarctica ice and another 100, 100 volcanoes just a few years ago. Now, going back to this, sometimes we think of Antarctica as this passive continent waiting for other things to act on it, but here it shows, it's showing changes before it knows what the North is doing. This is what T.J. Fudge said, University of Washington doctoral student in Earth and Space Sciences and lead corresponding author of this Nature paper. Co-authors are 41 other members of the West Antarctic Ice Sheet Divide Project, which is primarily funded by the National Science Foundation. I finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. The findings come from a detailed examination of an ice core taken from the West Antarctica Ice Sheet Divide, an area where there is little horizontal flow of the ice, so the data are known to be from a location that remained constant over long periods. The ice core is more than two miles deep and covers 68,000 years, though so far data have been analyzed only from layers going back 30,000 years. Near the surface, one meter of ice, that's three feet of ice, covers one year, but at greater depths, the annual layers are compressed to centimeters. Fudge identified the annual layers by running two electrodes along the ice cores to measure higher electrical conductivity associated with each summer season. Evidence of greater warming turned up in layers associated with 18,000 to 22,000 years ago, the beginning of the last deglaciation. This deglaciation is the last big climate change that we're able to go back and investigate, he said. It teaches us about how our climate systems work. West Antarctica is separated from East Antarctica by a major mountain range. East Antarctica has a substantially higher elevation and tends to be much colder, though there is recent evidence that it too is also warming. And here is the map as we can see, east and west. Rapid warming in West Antarctica in recent decades has been documented in previous research by Eric Stieg a UW professor of Earth and Space Sciences who serves on Fudge's doctoral committee and whose laboratory produced the oxygen isotope data used in the Nature paper. The new data confirms that West Antarctica's climate is more strongly influenced by regional conditions in the Southern Ocean than East Antarctica is. It's not surprising that West Antarctica is showing something different from East Antarctica on long time scales, but we did not have evidence for that before, Fudge said. He noted that the warming in West Antarctica 20,000 years ago is not explained by a change in the sun's intensity. Instead, how the sun's energy was distributed over the region was a much bigger factor. It not only warmed the ice sheet, but also warmed the Southern Ocean that surrounds Antarctica, particularly during summer months when more sea ice melting could take place. 
Changes in Earth's orbit today are not an important factor in the rapid warming that has been observed recently, he said. Fudge said Earth's orbit changes on the scale of thousands of years, but carbon dioxide today is changing on the scale of decades, so climate change is happening much faster today. This is from University of Washington press release on bended reality. But what about Earth's wobble today? Earth's wobble changing due to global warming, NASA study finds. Melting ice sheets, especially in Greenland, are changing the distribution of weight on Earth. And that has caused both the North Pole and the wobble, which is called polar motion, to change course, according to a study published in journal Science Advances. Scientists and navigators have been accurately measuring the true pole and polar motion since 1899, and for almost the entire 20th century, they migrated a bit towards Canada. But that has changed with this century, and now it's moving towards England, said study lead author Surendra Adhikari at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The recent shift from the 20th century direction is very dramatic, Adri Carey said. While scientists say the shift is harmless, it is meaningful. Jonathan Overpeck, professor of geoscience, University of Arizona, who wasn't part of the study, said, this highlights how real and profoundly large an impact humans are having on the planet. Since 2003, Greenland has lost an average of more than 600 trillion pounds of ice a year, and that affects the way the Earth wobbles in a manner similar to a figure skater lifting one leg while spinning, said NASA scientist Eric Evans, study co-author. And uh, the, one of the, a couple of days ago, I did make a, a video on Greenland. It has volcanoes underneath. It has a mantle plume associated with Iceland, which is another mantle plume. Magma underneath Greenland is causing Greenland ice to melt because it's hot. It's causing tremendous thermal changes, heat changes in Greenland, causing the ice sheet of Greenland to melt, the biggest ice sheet after Antarctica. But going back to this, Ivan said that he likes to think of it as a billion trucks each year dumping ice out of Greenland. On top of that, West Antarctica loses 275 trillion pounds of ice and East Antarctica gains about 165 trillion pounds of ice yearly, helping tilt the wobble further, even said. They all combine to pull polar motion towards the east, Adhikari said. Jian Li Chen, senior research scientist, University of Texas Center for Space Research, first attributed the pole shifts to climate change in 2013, and he said this new study takes his work a step further. Chen said, there is nothing to worry about. He was not part of the NASA study. He said, it is just another interesting effect of climate change. Okay, well, we, this is on also embedded reality from NASA study. But we know that Greenland, as we said before, has a mantle plume under it connected to Iceland and Svalbard to the north of Iceland. And Greenland is melting for that reason. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.